Hello everyone and thank you for coming today. We are delighted to be at a such an amazing event, having the opportunity to share with you our experiences with technology and games in basic education. The case study we will present today has been developed in Brazil over the past 15 years by the Oifituro Institute in the NAVI program. During this period, we have been developing and testing methodologies and best practices that can be used with students from different countries and social backgrounds. We believe that technology and games in schools can make a difference in develop students' full potential as active, responsible citizens and future professionals. Before beginning, I'd like to introduce myself and my colleagues. My name is Sarah Crossman and I am the Executive Director at the Oifuturo Institute. Now let me introduce Carla Uller, who is responsible for NAVI, our educational program, and Igor Moreno, a games teacher in NAVI schools and Cesar School, and also an independent game designer. And last but not least, we are very proud to have with us Vinicius Rodrigo, a NAVI student who at only 70 years old turned his school project into his first startup an ed tech based on games and designed to make a positive impact in public schools. And now, uh, just to warm up, let's play a quick game of true or false. Are you all ready? Yes, I'm ready. Hi, everyone. Uh, I have a first uh, question. It's a very common one. Is it true or false that the more educational a game is, the less fun it is too? Well, not at all, that's, it, that's false. That's an old perception from the 80s and 90s. Educational games nowadays can be really fun, but it's important to highlight that an educational game is not necessarily a game about teaching a specific content, but about triggering curiosities and offering new experiences that will improve skills and abilities among the students. When we strike the balance between like fun and informative, we have edutainment, which is great. Interesting. And is it true or false that the school must have a lot of technology and equipment to develop classes and activities based on games? Also false. <laughs> in our first year for high school, for example, in Navi, uh, we work essentially with classic board games like uh, everyone that everyone has available. Role-playing games are a good option for schools without labs. And something that is also interesting is print-and-play games. There are many options on the internet. The teacher can look for a game that makes sense for the class and just print it out. Uh, my turn now. Is it true or false that any teacher, not only a game teacher, can use games in their class, even if it's geography or biology? Now, now it's true. That's true. Uh, we have many good examples in Navi, for example, and you can check them out in our ebook. Our biology teacher, for example, used the live-action role-playing game to teach cytology. I don't know what that is, but she does. Uh, in the game, each student played the role of a part of a cell. So she didn't have to be a games teacher to use games. Uh, thank you, Igor. Now, Carla, uh, Navi is a reference in Brazil for use of technology and games in education. Could you give us a little bit more uh, perspective in, uh, on the program? Yes, of course, Sarah. It's my pleasure. Well, a long time ago, when we decided to design an education program, we understood that we could make a meaningful contribution if we search for new ways to make the high school uh, stage more attractive for students. In Brazil, high school is a mandatory stage of basic education, but uh, one million teenagers between 15 and 19 years old are out of classrooms today. For different and complex reasons, of course, the high school is not making sense to their realities. We also face serious learning challenges uh, inside our schools. Our students' performance in PISA International Exam is far behind from any expectation. So back then, in 2006, we thought, how could we create and pass a new high school strategy that could attract and retain the students and also elevate their capacity of learning 
progressing and leading in the future economies. That was the beginning of the NAVI program. We also made a partnership with the public sector to guarantee the program scale. We built two high schools from the ground up and we ran them together with uh, the state governments of Rio and Pernambuco. We also make sure that the innovations and solutions created in NAVI reach and inspire other public schools. So how does it work? NAVI schools offer a blend of traditional courses and technical courses such as computing, design and visual communication. The curriculum is designed to integrate theory and practice, which means biology and 3D animation can team up for the study of human anatomy, just to give you an example. Over 3,000 students have already graduated and a thousand more are, are now enrolled in the program. Our strategy is based on four main pillars, diversity and inclusion, 58% of the students are self-identify as black or multi-ethnic and 82% of them have a family income lower than $108 a month. Youth uh, empowerment, which means we stimulate them to explore real-world problems and to see themselves as agents of transformation. Product-based learning. Navi students create around uh, 50 new games each year, besides other school projects at, um, such as short movies, magazines and apps. And finally, connection to the student's reality. We constantly encourage them to bring their social reality and personal experience to the classroom. And we also use a lot of digital and pop culture as part of um, our pedagogical strategies. And we've been achieving some really good results. Annually, uh, the schools are featured with the best performance in official rankings among public schools. And according to our last survey with former students, over 74% pursued academic degrees, while only 36% uh, of Brazilian high schoolers advanced to um, higher education. Some of our former students, as Vinicius here, are also launching their own businesses. And now that you know a little bit more about the program, it's time to discuss how the magic really happens inside the classroom. Igor, many people must be wondering right now, why games in education? Well, uh, as a historian Johann Heusinger tells us uh, in his classic uh, work Homo Ludens, the word school originally meant a time or place of leisure. We kind of lost that idea as time went on, so the concept of school became actually the opposite, a place of systematic work and training. It explains a lot why so many kids don't feel much pleasure in school anymore. So when you use games in school, you are basically just reconnecting to its basic principle and meaning. Igor, how is the student's journey in Navi technical course? Uh, what do you actually teach in gaming culture uh, course? Well, it's, it's funny. So students, they go through the course during three years of high school, like alongside the regular uh, school curriculum. Uh, so when they enroll in school, they may choose between studying either multimedia or programming. Uh, the multimedia course uh, focuses more on audiovisual design techniques, while the, the programming course focuses more on programming logic and language and so forth. But both are not separate from one another as they both have a common driving force which are games. My subject, gaming culture, is the common link between them. Uh, for example, during their first year, students are exposed to a variety of games, it's tabletop games, role-playing games, video games, and they develop basic skills on their chosen courses. By the end of the year, they prototype a tabletop game with what they have learned. In their second year, the students team up to produce a digital game or a video game within the school year using the skills that they developed during their lessons and in this case, we provide a theme for the games, so students have to pitch their ideas as though they were like professional game developers. And by the third year, they can, they can propose any project that they feel like, like games, apps, short movies, magazines, etc. While their lessons, they focus more and more on project management, product management, business handling, and in case they want to continue their projects after graduating from high school.
Many people here must be wondering how does a typical first day at school go? What did they expect when uh, they came in this first day? They think uh, the school, the Navi school is about playing ga video games all day long? Well, that's it. when the students get, they come in the first day of high school, they don't really believe they will have like a mandatory subject about games. They sure do like playing, but they don't see it as something that you can like study or learn. So during our first ever class, I choose some tabletop game that is simple to play, but, but bear in mind, I have 40 students in each class and my goal is to have all of them explore the game together. So I don't explain anything related to that game. No rules, no context, nothing. And I start by looking, like, for example, at the game's box and asking them questions. For example, what do you think this game is about? What does the illustration on the cover tell you? Uh, why do you think the game pieces are shaped like that? And at a certain point, I ask the students to try and play the game with whatever understanding they came up with during the previous debate and see if anything makes sense. Eventually, I do explain them the rules and play some games and then we discuss what they got right, what they got wrong, etc. And that's how I show them that games can be studied. And that's the first day and it goes on like that for three whole years. It looks like very fun. And I also heard you have created a new activity called uh, the Search of the Lost Games that really engage your students and the whole school. Uh, what is this and how, how does it work? Well, uh, it's essentially a treasure hunt for the lost rules of a game. There's this, this really ancient game called the Royal Game of Ur that was played like in ancient Mesopotamia. Uh, the game's rules in real life, they were understood by the deciphering writings on clay tablets. So the activity consists in students gathering scattered sheets of paper containing the game's rules throughout the school. And during the hunt, they will have to solve problems from many subjects such as math, history, geography, in order to receive the clues indicating where the rules are hidden. Therefore, they also explore places in school where they may never go otherwise. Uh, but and finally, the rules are written in a foreign language taught at the school, which in our case is the English language. So the final challenge is working together to translate the rules. Uh, and the reward at the end is being able to play some games of the Royal Game of Ur in a short competition. And by the way, this activity, the search of the lost game, is featured uh, in our digital guide in Navi with all the practical tools to try it out in your school project. We are making the English version available today for the first time. And it's completely free for download. You can do it using the QR code on your screen right now. You find there 85 in-class practice created and tested by educators from Navi program. And Igor uh, is one of the authors. Yes, Carla. And, and a nice thing about our ebook is that it shows that innovation in Navi is created hand in hand by teachers and students. Speaking of which, uh, Vinicius, uh, you just finished high school last month, if I'm not mistaken, but you already have a bunch of great stories to tell, as far as I know. Three years ago, what changed in your life when you started studying in a school that had technology and games integrated into the curriculum? What changed? Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. And, uh, wow, well, it's a funny story, Igor, because, but until three years ago, before I became a Navi student, I wanted to be a dentist. And uh, as any other boy at my age, I used to see computers and the mobile phones only as tools to talk to my friends. But I couldn't see its true potential, no? I, I couldn't even imagine develop games and transform the world. Um, my father is an attendant in a gas station. My mother is a cook assistant. And I always studied in public schools outskirts of my city, Recife. And the Recife is the Brazilian capital of the highest level of inequality according to our National Institute of Research. Also, the public schools in Brazil are very different in quality and the resource in comparison to the public schools in America or Europe, for example. Um, when I was in my elementary school, I felt that in general, students didn't have any pleasure there. And I, I think, what I can do in this space? And when I was to my high school, uh, in my first year at NAV, I took the class Games to Change the World. And uh, maybe you can imagine what it, it represents for me. Um, in my first year, I developed a game, a board game inspired by checkers, but with different rules. Um, in Portuguese, we have another name for checkers. 
it's called like a ladies game. So in my project, I changed the rules to in order to limit the possible movement of one player on the board. This player represents women in our society and the basic idea was to demonstrate how difficult it is to win if your movements are limited, while your opponent can freely move in our directions. Um, and uh, in my second year, I developed a game about the Inca Empire in South America to teach history. I also designed with my colleagues a treasure hunt to motivate the students to use more the library. The clues were hiding in the book they should read to unlock the next stage. The treasure was chocolate or movie tickets. So inspiring, Vinicius. Um, but when did you actually realize that your school projects could go beyond school and you could become a social entrepreneur? Um, yeah, that's the point. Uh, at a certain time, I sort of see myself as an agent for social transformation and uh, as a young change maker. So Nav helped me a lot with it and uh, it truly changed my life. I sort of offer workshops to public schools and the university to help them with basic tools like uh, um, technology and the gamification. But the turning point was when I, we developed a project inspired in the classic The Little Prince. In the Brazilian version of this story, The Little Prince is actually a countryside boy that survives the lack of water in our dry region using his creativity and good mood. We made a game in the cartoon and it became a famous because the story is very typical of this part of Brazil. Um, so, and it is about us and the, our reality. And the, later, I was invited to turn this project into a social business and a joy and acceleration program in Porto Digital. And uh, Porto Digital is one of the most important innovation hubs in the country. I was more or less 70 years old then, and I was in the second year of high school. Now, we have seven employees and the partners, and it is the best part. They are our students for Navi2. We offer gamification consultancy and the workshops to, uh, to schools. We try to monetize in private schools and offer the service with a very low rates for public schools. Suddenly, I started to give interviews to Brazilian and national media to tell my story about how to use digital and analogical tools as channel to positive change. And Vinicius, uh, is there a lesson to be learned from your story that you'd like to pass on the other students and teachers? Yeah, yeah, Sarah. Well, I love when you ask me this question because I believe that our reality is broken, our educational system is broken, and as a game design that you are, that I am, we can do something, you know. Uh, we can start to fix it when we build new games with new rules and more empathy. I learned that games really can change the world. Uh, now that our talk is coming to a close, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for being with us. It's been really wonderful having you here. But before finishing, I'd like to ask Igor to share with us a few of his ideas about how best to use games in education. Well, of course. Uh, first one, create a magic circle. There's this theory in games that every game happens inside a magical circle uh, with rules that you cannot break, otherwise you're out of the game. These rules are indeed a social contract of trust and respect among the players. If you assume that the class is the game, so the class happens inside the magic circle and apart from other school activities, when the students get that, the class will work much easier with games. And also, the, the second one, be aware of accessible resources. As a teacher, you can expand your horizons on game possibilities and be aware of resources which are easily obtainable, such as print and play games and believe that technology is not a condition to play games with students. There is a whole universe of offline games from a simple puzzle to role-playing games. And another thing, focus on developing skills and abilities, not just traditional educational content. So choose transformative subjects as class challenges and game challenges. For example, uh, one of the 17 goals of the United Nations, for example. And also, don't explain all the rules. Instigate the curiosity and the desire of exploration. And the last one, have fun. That's what games are all about. 
Have fun, everyone. Have fun and bye-bye. Thank you.